Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, and this is my DPS guide for the Magicka Templar. With the Greymore chapter, I'd say that Magicka classes are probably in the best place they've ever been. All six classes are great options to bring, and Magicka Templar is no exception. Magplar has really strong AoE and single target damage, and is great for both group and solo play. In this video, I'll be going over the top races for Templar, the Mundus Stone, Vampirism, Food and Potions, Gear, Skill Bars, Champion Points, the Rotation, and finally we'll end with the parse from Roskag on the 21 million health raid dummy. A big thanks to Roskag for sharing this clip with me of his parse, and also a big thanks to Martine for sharing some tips and info to help me understand Magplar a little bit better. I also want to let you all know I've started streaming pretty often over at Twitch, Come stop by and say hey if you have a chance. This is my tentative schedule over there for right now. I always make sure to post updates on Twitter if anything with that schedule changes. All right, let's go ahead and get started. For the race, the top three options we have are High Elf, Dark Elf, and then Khajiit. Dark Elf is about 0.5% and Khajiit about 3 to 4% DPS behind High Elf under normal conditions. An interesting thing to note this patch, with the introduction of Thracian Stranglers and the insanely high spell damage that's obtainable with it, Khajiit actually ends up nearly equal to High Elf when you start nearing max stacks. It varies a bit from class to class due to passives, but Khajiit's extra 10% crit damage starts to come closer and closer to the 258 spell damage that Altmer and Dunmer get, the higher your spell damage goes. So if you think you'll be using Thracian a good bit, and want a race option that has a little more health and sustain, Khajiit is a great option to go with. Bretons are a nice Magicka DPS option as well, but won't pass up High Elves if you're going for that top end damage. Once again though, if you're using Thracian and you have a ton of stacks, that 258 spell damage that you're losing out on makes less and less of a difference the higher your overall spell damage is. So maybe the extra sustain and spell resistance would be worth it to you over the little bit of damage you'd be losing out on. So overall, with as wild and probably unbalanced as Thracian Stranglers are, they do actually help lessen the gap between the different races at the high end. For our Mundus Stone, we'll be going with the Shadow. If you are a brand new player still leveling up, you'll probably get slightly more damage from using something like the Lover for the extra penetration, but as soon as you get into a more optimized setting, the Shadow will win out by a decent bit. For Vampirism, with the Greymore patch, the Vampire skill line added in an amazing Magicka-based melee spammable ability in Blood for Blood. The skill hits insanely hard and one of the best parts of it is that it costs health instead of Magicka, so it takes away Magicka sustain issues for anyone that uses it. Templars are a bit unique in that they actually have a Magicka melee spammable that can rival Blood for Blood in damage with Puncturing Sweep, but Templars do have a really expensive set of skills to cast, so you may want to run Blood for Blood if you're running into any sustain issues. If you aren't having any trouble sustaining Puncturing Sweep, it might be a better option for you for many fights due to it being AoE damage and it proccing the powerful Templar passive Burning Light. For strictly single target scenarios though, Blood for Blood is probably your best bet. Another vampire skill that you might use would be Simmering Frenzy. This ability is a little tricky, but if you can master it, it can add a nice bit of burst. You want to make sure to toggle it on right before your spammable burst window or before an ultimate and toggle it off afterwards. This ability is not on a global cooldown, meaning that it can be weaved in on the same one second timer as another ability, meaning you don't actually have to change your rotation to use it. A fair warning though, it can be a little tricky to toggle off as it seems sometimes when you click the button to turn it off, it simply doesn't work. This can lead to you taking too much damage when you didn't mean to and not surviving. For this reason, many people have opted to leave it off of their bars. It may be worth trying and experimenting with for you though. For the food, buy stat food with Magicka and Health is the best option if you can sustain it, preferably Arteum Pickled Fish Bowl, but you can also use the blue buy stat food as well at a slight loss if the purple food is too expensive. If you're having trouble sustaining and you've already tried using sustain skills and gear and worked with your group to coordinate sustain sets but you're still having trouble, you can also use Clockwork Citrus Filet. This will lower your health and magicka pool by a decent bit though, so it's really only recommended as a last resort if all of your other sustain options have failed. And then finally for practicing on the dummy, most people like to use the Ghastly Eyeball Drink. For our potions, we're using Spell Power plus Spell Damage plus Spell Critical. Now I'll go over the gear. I'll put the locations that each set drops in in the description below. If you're ever curious about what a set does or where it comes from, I highly recommend checking out esosets.com. It's always up to date with the most current information. I'll go through a few different options here, and since we're going through several, I won't get quite as detailed in each one, but all of these graphics will be down in the description below as well and have all the information you need. First option we'll go over is a more versatile gear setup, and this will be a non-Thracian Strangler setup. 
So for the monster set, we'll do a two-piece Maw of the Infernal or Doma House. Maw of the Infernal is better for most situations, and Doma House is really nice for targets with big hitboxes like the Dragons and Sunspire. Then we'll do a five-piece False God and a five-piece Mother's Sorrow and a Maelstrom Staff on our back bar. If you're not running into any sustain issues at all, you can also use a False God Staff on your front bar instead of the Mother's Sorrow Staff. This should be a tiny bit more DPS, but it really doesn't matter too much either way. This next setup will be our highest damage non-Thrassian setup. Again, we'll be going with a two-piece Maw the Infernal or Doma House, five-piece Brother's Sorrow, and a five-piece Sororia with a Maelstrom Staff on our back bar. The common question I get is why Sororia Staff and not a Mother's Sorrow Staff? It's because the Sororia bonus that you get comes from the ring that you stand in, which will carry over while you're on your back bar, while the Mother's Sorrow Staff is a static bonus and it does not carry over to your back bar. So you will get slightly more DPS by using the Sororia Staff instead of the Sorrow Staff. If you don't have a Sororia Staff and you have to use a Sorrow Staff, you can also do that too. Uh, it's just a little bit less DPS. Now I'll go over a couple of setups using Thracian Stranglers. Um, these will be the highest damage potential setups that you can use, but just keep in mind there is some risk involved with using that set. This first option will be keeping our normal two-piece monster set, then we'll use a four-piece False God with the False God Inferno Staff, and then a five-piece Mother Sorrow with the Maelstrom Staff on our back bar. This setup is really nice if you're not having any sustain issues as it lets you keep using a monster set, uh, but you do lose that five piece bonus from False God, so the extra sustain you'd get from that, you won't have anymore. This shouldn't be an issue if you're using Blood for Blood, but might be a little tough if you're using a different spammable. And that'll lead us into our next Mythic setup. For this setup, we use a one piece monster set with critical on it, such as Grundwolf or Slimecraw. And then we'll use a five piece Mother's Sorrow, and then either a five piece False Gods or a five piece Sororia, depending on the situation. One thing you'll notice about all these setups is they're all really focused around having a high crit chance. It's one of the most important things to focus into when you're using Thrassian. Since your spell damage is already so high, your critical modifiers will be much bigger boosts to your DPS over more Magicka or spell damage. Now I'll go over the skill bar options and I'll put all the passes that are needed in the description below. For our front bar, we're going to be running Inner Light, Blazing Spear, Purifying Light, our Spammable, Radiant Oppression, and then Ice Comet or Shooting Star as our ultimate. For the Spammable, a general rule of thumb is if you want single target melee damage, you'll use Blood for Blood. If you want AoE melee damage, you'll use Puncturing Sweep. If you want AoE ranged damage, you'll use Force Pulse. And then for single target ranged damage, you'll use Elemental Weapon. For our back bar, our first slot will be our flex spot, and this can be channeled focus if we need some more sustain and survivability. It can also be a shield, it could be inner light if you just want to boost your magicka pool on your back bar, vampire's bane to add in another single target dot, or ritual retribution for a nice heal and AoE damage. Then we have unstable wall of elements, solar barrage, mystic orb, barbed trap or channeled acceleration, and then crescent sweep or fiery rage as the ultimate. If you're really finding yourself needing a second flex spot for another skill, you can also take out Solar Barrage. You will lose a bit of DPS, but it's probably the next best ability to drop. Now I'll go over the champion points. For the blue tree, we'll do 56 Elemental Expert, 61 Elfborn, 10 Spell Erosion, 56 Master at Arms, 6 Staff Expert, and 81 Thaumaturge. Just keep in mind you'll always want to hit the penetration cap of 18,200, so if you're a little low, make sure to remove some points from some of the other trees and put into Spell Erosion. Then for the red and the green trees, I did put some generic CP setups here, but you'll want to adjust those based on your personal preferences and also based on what content you're running. If you'd like to join the ESO University Discord, which has champion point setups posted for each of the different trials, I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Now I'll go over a couple of rotations. The first rotation we'll go over is the simplest one I came up with. I also was able to get some pretty good results with this using Blood for Blood. I did hit over 90k on the 21 million health trial dummy. And this particular parse was using Maw of the Infernal as the monster set, 5 piece Sororia, and 5 piece Mother's Sorrow. So to start out, you'll want to open with your rune if you're running it. Otherwise, you can skip to the next step, which is either cast channeled acceleration or your trap. And then you'll fire off your ultimate, which is the ice comet or shooting star. And you'll only use this ultimate one time in the parse. Uh, the rest of the time, we'll be using the crescent sweep as our ultimate. 
And when you're determining which morph of Meteor to take, if you're just going to use the ult once and it's only single target, the Ice Comet will do a little bit more damage. But if you'll be hitting multiple targets and possibly using the Meteor more than once, you'll definitely want to go with Shooting Star. After that, we'll use our Blazing Spear and then the rotation will start up. We'll do Unstable Wall, Solar Barrage, Mystic Orb, Bar Swap, Purifying Light, Five Spammables, and then Blazing Spear, and then Bar Swap and start the rotation over. Whenever your trap or your channeled acceleration is about to run out and you need to reapply it, you'll replace one of your spammables with that ability. And you'll also do the same with your ultimate whenever it's ready, the Crescent Sweep. We don't get the best of times on Purifying Light with this rotation since it's only 6 seconds and the other dot abilities are 10 seconds, but it does make the rotation much more simple and easy to follow. And it still does really nice damage. For the execute phase, we'll want to drop our spammable when the enemy has about 30% health or so left, and we'll start using our Radiant Oppression in place of it. Just keep in mind that Radiant Oppression does last about as long as two skills. Then around the 25% mark, we're going to drop Solar Barrage and Mystic Orb. About 15%, we will only be using Unstable Wall, Blazing Spear, Trap or Channeled Acceleration, and Radiant Oppression, so we'll be dropping Purifying Light. And then at about 5% health or so, we'll just beam them to death. A good general rule of thumb is that if you'll have time to get the full duration out of the wall or the spear, then go ahead and recast them. And if you don't, then just beam your way out. This next rotation will be pretty similar, except we're just prioritizing purifying light to keep it up a little bit better. So our back bar will be the same every time. Unstable wall, solar barrage, and mystic orb. And then our front bar will alternate back and forth between Purifying Light, Spear, Four Spammables, Purifying Light. And then the next time around will be Spammable, Spear, Purifying Light, Four Spammables. And just like with the last rotation, we'll replace one of our Spammables with our Trap, Channeled Acceleration, or our Ultimate whenever it's ready. And then the way we handle Execute is also the same. Beyond this, you really get into the realm of just handling all of your dots fully dynamically. You'll notice in the parse that Rosekeg does, he opts to go with Vampire's Bane on his back bar in place of Inner Light, which has a bit longer of a timer than some of the other abilities. If you don't want to go dynamic, it's really not a big deal. Templar is one of the better classes to do a static rotation on and still get almost the full potential DPS. If you do want to go fully dynamic, you can still follow these same execute principles that we talked about in the previous rotations. Well, all right, that's going to be the end of this guide. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or to stop by my Twitch stream. Here's the parse from Ruskag on the trial dummy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, bye.